It's 5.30 on Tuesday, May 18th, and we are going to start the Sun Prairie Committee of the Whole meeting. Elena, would you please take the roll? Bowling? All right, here. Crombie? Here. Jacobs? Here. Yokish? Here. McElroy? Here. Polensky? Here. Stevens? Here. And Stacker? Here. We have quorum. Thank you very much, Elena. Thank you everybody for joining. Uh, the first item is the approval of the minutes from May 4th, 2021. I'll move to approve them. I'll okay. second. Polinsky, I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any additions, changes, or deletions? Okay, hearing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, thank you, that passes. Uh, citizen appearance, public comment. Don, anybody in the audience that isn't here for um, one of the items on the agenda? Uh, there are two people in attendance, but there were no survey monkey respondents to ask. To okay, speak. are those two people here for Quora or the Bucci project? I do not recognize the names. Okay, then we should probably we should probably inquire so we don't miss anything. Alder Stockard, this is Sarah Sauer. I can tell you, um, besides Chief Goff, the other three are from the Sustainability Task Force. Oh, okay, great, great. Okay, fantastic. Thank you, Sarah. Okay, so we are going to move on. Uh, Council Liaison Committee reports. Anything to report? Shoot. Nothing. I have one. And this, this is a biggie. This is an annual, annual event in Sun Prairie. In fact, it's the 34th <laughs> annual event. It's Strawberry Fest time uh, <laughs> coming up on June 19th at the Colonial Club. It'll be from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. And it's going to be an all outdoor event. And what they're going to have is, of course, fresh strawberry sales, strawberry shortcake, brats and hot dogs, beer, wine. Our own Sun Prairie Media Center will be there again, as they are um, every year I know I've gone. There'll be crafters in the park, an art cart, pop-up balloons, and a 50-50 raffle. They will have live, live music, and it's going to be Sun Prairie's own 930 standard. And there'll be shows at 11.30 and 1 o'clock. So just wanted to mention that if you have the opportunity again on June 19th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., please come out and support this great organization. Alder Yokish. Uh, yeah, I have a report from the Parks Recreation Forestry Commission. Great. Uh, let's see, as far as 2021 capital improvement projects, the splash pad is on track for opening at the end of June and information on a grand opening date and ceremony, it will be coming soon. Uh, playground projects will, beginning, will be beginning soon, starting with West Prairie Village Park this month. Uh, Liberty Park shelter construction is underway and it's expected to be completed by the end of uh, July. And I think this one you may have seen in the sun, uh, Park Recreation Forestry Commission and approved a proposal by the Sun Prairie Parks Friends to build a pollinator garden at Wetmore Park. Uh, that's about it. Ah, thank you very much for that report. Are there any others? Okay, moving on that we have no unfinished business, new business. Present, I'm very excited about this one. Presentation on the sustainability task force. And I'm sure that's gonna be Alder Jacobs? Or what is it gonna be Sarah? That's, that's actually gonna it'll be, be Sarah. It'll be Sarah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so if it's all right with you, I don't have a, oh, I don't think I have a share screen option. I'm oh, excited I do. There because it is. There this, it is. One has, this one has three bottom lines to it. Not just one, not two, <laughs> but three Sweet. bottom lines. I was excited to see that. You got it. All right. So um, I'm going to hopefully try and make this brief, but still give you guys some good background on what exactly this task force worked on. So um, this task force consisted of about 11 task force members. 
um, with Alder Jacobs as a chair. Uh, myself and Jeremy Kramer uh, served as co-facilitators. Um, and then we got, uh, uh, we met bi-weekly, so twice a month for about a year, beginning in May 2020 and ending here on April 29th. Um, so aside from our task force members and city staff, we also got contributions and expertise from Andy Hervilla with some of our utilities, Clint Cry with WPPI, um, and then of course, Aaron and uh, Sandy, who were very instrumental in, in helping us move this forward. So um, just a little timeline here, as you see in the screen again, it was, uh, we had the resolution that began in, in March or was approved in March for this task force. We began meeting in May um, every other week. So we had, you do the math. <laughs> I haven't done that in my head. Um, but we also, we had several guest speakers attend. So for example, we had a thousand friends of Wisconsin, uh, representatives from, from Green Tier Legacy Communities, who is a, a member or a, um, they combined with the DNR. Uh, we had two city roundtable discussions. So we had the chance for um, directors and uh, division heads from each department within the city, every city municipal operation come in and provide a, a little presentation of how their department works and what their sustainable objectives and plans and policies are. And then there was an um, opportunity for questions and um, dialogue. So that was very helpful, I think, in moving forward with some of these recommendations. Um, and then again, the task force conducted uh, some public surveys. So there was one public survey that was actually sent out to about 700 households in the community, which actually got about 208 back, which um, is about a 33% completion rate. And, and that's um, a pretty good rate can, uh, compared to, or according to the UW River Falls Survey Research Center who conducted this survey for us. So we'll talk a little bit more on that. And then there were two staff surveys, one for each division head and one for each department manager. Um, so here, just the report that you might have all looked at, um, it was included in this packet here tonight, but uh, the task force actually had a lot of accomplishments here. They were tasked with a number of, of um, objectives here to evaluate sustainable practices, solicit public input, um, review a bunch of city plans, comprehensive plan and uh, energy audit that was done by Slipstream um, and a lot of other focus on raising awareness in the community. So through all of that, the task force um, defined sustainability as it pertains to Sun Prairie in, its, in itself, um, develop a vision statement with um, several goals to advance sustainability determine critical focus and impact areas, um, not just with for the general public, but for both municipal operations as well. Um, again, there's those surveys that I talked about with each city department and citizen, um, the general public, uh, develop detailed, measurable strategic recommendations to achieving those these goals, uh, and then also identified some potential barriers that um, could be perceived with some of these recommendations, as well as the appropriate action or implementation strategies to achieving these uh, goals. So as you see here in the screen, it's in the report, so I'm not going to go too in depth, but there's the definition, just meeting the balance of the community through both um, environmental protection, social equity, and environmental or economic stability. Uh, and then the vision statement, just to collaborate with the citizens to create and expand sustainability practices uh, while always recognizing the interdependence of environmental quality, economic growth, social equity. And I think you're gonna find those very familiar, those three, those three things, those, the environment, the equity and the economy. That's that's the triple bottom line here, as Alder Soccer was talking about here earlier. Um, the triple bottom line is a very, very popular common uh, method for measuring sustainability, um, making sure it covers all aspects of a program, a company, a municipality. It focuses not just on the planet, not just on environmental green features, but also on the social and equitable part of sustainability, anywhere from housing to um, neighborhood uh, in involvement to communities and facilities, and then profit, that the economic part of it, making sure there's economic stability within a community. So then the group identified um, some impact areas, which these areas probably look very familiar to you. These are uh, components of a comprehensive plan. So everything that you see here on the screen are all the elements that are required with a comprehensive 
plan with the addition of community engagement and social justice and then lifestyle. So those are the, the um, impact areas that this group focused on. And then underneath those, the triple bottom line and those goal, uh, those the triple bottom line and those impact areas are some eight underlying goals that um, look to provide safe and affordable transportation for all, creating a socially just community with sustainable development patterns, striving to achieve net zero for water waste and greenhouse gas emissions, evaluating and measuring benchmarks, uh, integrating sustainability into all municipal decision-making processes, engage and educate community stakeholders on sustainable lifestyles and business practices, uh, invest in resident wellness and healthy lifestyles, uh, and then grow and diversify a sustainable and equitable business sector. Uh, as I mentioned here, there's that community survey that was moved um, forward here. Uh, the statistically significant survey, again, as I mentioned here before, um, some of the there are some of the some of the conclusions to take away from this survey that I think will really benefit us benefit the city moving forward. Um, there was a surprising level of agreement about almost all of the policy options about which some prairie residents were asked. So at least 50% of the respondents agreed or strongly agreed with 34 of the 43 policy options. So any policy option in this survey was very highly uh, preferred or agreed by the um, by the people who responded. Uh, across all policy questions, an average of about one in five respondents selected the no opinion answer. Um, so what we gather from this is that there may be a need for additional outreach and education about the options uh, included within this survey. Uh, based on the policies with the highest level of support, some prairie residents seem more open to environmentally focused sustainability policy options. Uh, the top 10 issues in this report uh, were primarily that green feature about wetlands, green space, stabilizing stream banks. Um, so I think that also goes to show you that a lot of people do correlate sustainability with green and, and kind of leave those other two parts of the triple bottom line kind of off in the distance and don't really think about it too much. Uh, and there are relatively few statistically significant differences across the demographic groups in terms of agreement and disagreement, um, agreement and disagreement. So it was pretty consistent whether the income level, the age group, the race, the neighborhood, um, all these demographics that we asked in the survey, uh, it was pretty consistent amongst all of those respondents. Um, so just breaking down here with the, the structure of the report that you had read and how this process went forward. Um, again, those we started with those three focus elements, people, planet, profit, some people might see it as environment, economic, and equity. The nine impact areas, those components of the comprehensive plan, the eight goals that you saw. And then breaking, down those, breaking those down even further, this group, I think we started with close to 200 or so recommendations to fall underneath each of those goals. And um, we were able to dwindle it down to 115. It, it, it still, it seems like a lot. And I think that it's, it's going to be a lot of work, um, but a lot of progress moving forward in the city. Um, but again, that's underneath eight goals. So I, on average, you're probably having about 16 or 17 recommendations underneath each of these goals um, to be, you know, accomplished over you know, anywhere from working on that immediately to something that's quick and fixable to something that may take 10 or 20 years, um, but will have a long-term return on investment. So again, those final results in that report um, I looked at not strategic recommendations. They are defined or uh, separated between those that uh, are related to more municipal operations, such as uh, city vehicles converting to hybrid, uh, and then some of those recommendations are separated between what uh, we can do to educate and help the general public become more sustainable. Identify, uh, this group identified implementation strategies, so whether it was a policy in action or a program, um, an implementation timeline, uh, it's, it's not necessarily, the priority ranking isn't necessarily what's more important, but some more of what can be done soon and quick versus something that needs other things to happen first before it can be fully um, seen as being accomplished. And then challenges and barriers, like I said, so that can range anywhere from buy-in from elected officials or the public 
to funding, to staff time, to education, uh, technology, equipment, infrastructure, so forth. Um, and as you see, as you all approved uh, earlier this year, a uh, sustainability coordinator. So we have hired, um, offered a position and received the accepted offer from our sustainability coordinator. Uh, his name is Scott and he's looking to begin here in July. And he's got quite a task here with 115 recommendations from the task force. Um, but we're really excited to see him come on board and see how sustainability moves forward in the city. And um, like I said, myself and Jeremy, we are here. We're able to answer any questions if you have any. Um, and that, that task force has been a great, a great time and a great improvement, I think, for the city. Thank you very much, Sarah. Uh, would you take a, a moment and introduce uh, those that uh, maybe are in the audience? Um, sure, yeah. So I we have. We would like to thank all of them. We have um, Lee Gasper Galvin, who's in the audience tonight um, as part of our task force. Uh, Sue Ann Larson is here watching. And then uh, Scott Sumrock, who is our future sustainability coordinator, he is also sitting here in attendance tonight. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I, I just want to say um, to Alder Mike Jacobs, thank you for your vision. This and uh, Sarah and Jeremy and Lee and Sue Ann, Scott. This, this has been an amazing amount of work in one year. I'm very, very impressed. We're definitely moving in the right direction. And uh, yeah, thank you for all your work. I know you invested a lot of time in this and hopefully like you say, Sarah, we can you know do the low hanging fruit like right away and then get to, uh, get to the rest of it very soon. So well, thank Chase you. Stockard, you can thank us by passing our resolutions and suggestions. Well, that's that's what we're gonna that's what we're gonna be doing next. We're gonna see if the sustainability uh, committee has sustainability, I guess you could say, and see if it lasts. So, thank you very much for that presentation, Sarah. And as uh, an impatient but wants to know, Alder Jacobs, <laughs> thank you for moving me on. We have uh, next on the agenda consideration, discussion, and possible action on an ordinance creating or changing. Uh, creating chapter 2.70, the Sustainability Committee. Mr. President, if I could walk through that uh, with the Committee of the Whole, with your permission. Yes, sir. All right, we have the memo and the draft ordinance in your packet. Mm -hmm. um, city staff worked with Alder Jacobs to outline the Sustainability Committee. If you remember when the resolution was passed creating the task force, a permanent sustainability committee was part of that original resolution. So this is an evolution in the process that uh, city council foresaw back when we began this journey, that there would be a committee established uh, once the task force completed its work. You have received the final report this evening. So the task force has dissolved. Uh, and now we are asking for uh, the committee of the whole to consider a ordinance. Um, just to walk through it quickly with you, it would encompass uh, nine members. Uh, it would have a person from the Public Works Committee, a person from the Parks, Recreation, and Forestry Commission, two individuals from the business community, one person from the Sun Prairie School District, one student, two community members at large, and one council member elected by the council itself uh, during the organizational meeting. So we would be adding one more position to the organizational meeting. Uh, you all will remember that because you just went through it, that there is a, a council president, vice president, uh, some pre utilities uh, person, a plan commission member, a fire advisory committee member, and then there would be this position added on to it. Um, for the council to select that person would serve as chair of the um, of the uh, sustainability committee. The committee would be doing four things under the ordinance. It would be advocating, uh, which could include things within city government, but it also could include things in the private sector. It could be educating. Uh, it could be recommending 
uh, ordinances, policies, guidelines. And finally, it is providing accountability uh, to all of us that we are making progress. And so those are really the four things outlined in the ordinance that the committee would be doing. And so happy to answer any questions that you may have. Okay, thank you. Does anyone have any questions for Mr. Oppenheimer or anyone else? Okay, hearing none, um, would anybody like to make a motion? I will make the motion to approve Chapter 2.7, Sustainability Committee. Even seconds. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Elena, please take the roll. Unmute first. Bowling? Aye. Crombie? Aye. Jacobs? Aye. Yokish? Aye. McElroy? Aye. Polanski? Aye. Stevens? Aye. Stocker? Aye. And that passes to PO. Okay. Thank you very much. And congratulations, Sustainability Committee. Continue the great work. Okay, it's time to go into closed session. Um, I would entertain a motion to go into closed session. Jacob, so move. Okay, we have a move. Is there a second? McElroy seconds. Okay, we have a move and a second. Elena, would you please take the roll? Bowling? Aye. Crombie? Aye. Jacobs? Aye. Yokish? Aye. McElroy? Aye. Polensky? Aye. Stevens? Aye. Stocker? Aye. Right. Don, could you please let us know when we're in closed session? But we do need to actually have the vote, though. It doesn't have to be a roll call. Yes. Okay, we're back on open session. Okay, thank you. So we came back into open session um, for the public. Uh, there was no, um, no uh, direction or no vote on the Quora Stone. However, we will be voting on the the uh, Bouge project, Adam Bougie Glass Nickel project. So back in open session, what is the appetite of the council? Is there a motion to go forward with this? Polensky will make a motion to move forward with it. Okay. Over Stephen seconds. Okay. Thank you, Alder Stevens. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Okay. Elena, would you please take the roll? Uh, Bowling? Aye. Crombie? Aye. Jacobs? Aye. Yokish? Aye. McElroy? Aye. Polanski? Aye. Stevens? Aye. Stocker? Aye. That Thank passes 8 0. Thank you very much. So, on to the, um, the reports. I, in the interest of time, I will make mine very brief because I promised we would uh, have one. Okay, as far as the hybrid model, um, as far as bringing the council back together, um, in the background, you hear Don McDermott. He's uh, within probably a couple weeks of making this hybrid model happen. By that, I mean, we have to have some additional hardware or software on the media center side to make everything work right. Um, plus, uh, Today, met with Brad Saren and Steve uh, Schroeder from the school. Um, that was a meeting with uh, our mayor, Paul, and uh, city administrator, Aaron, and myself, and Brad and Steve. I would like to update you all on everything that's happening on the school board, but again, in the interest of time, I'll save that until next time. Um, I would like to bring forward an idea, and it'll be a recommendation, a referral, rather. Um, and that would be an alder to alder meeting uh, with other municipalities. Again, as fiduciary or fiduciary agents uh, for our taxpayers, I believe that 
we could gain something in talking to other municipalities to gain ideas. And that, if nothing else, we might be able to glean um, best practices from them. But I think there might be ways that maybe we could say, oh, you know, you're doing this and that would be a good uh, revenue generator for Sun Prairie or a good uh, maybe expense reducer for Sun Prairie. So I've already started speaking with Mayor Becky Glue and I'll meet Beaver Dam. Uh, that could possibly our, be our first, but uh, if it's successful, we could go with Middleton, Fitch, Verona, and so on. So just want to post you on that one. Okay, City Administrator Report, Aaron. Just a couple quick items. One is uh, Madison and Dane County uh, Public Health issued uh, uh, new guidelines, essentially starting June 2nd, that masks will not be required. So all new, all their orders will be rescinded uh, as of June 2nd. Uh, so wanted you to be aware of that, that new uh, guidance that's come out from public health. Uh, we've received 14 applications for the assistant chief of police position and interviews start uh, this Friday. Uh, 84 uh, folks were vaccinated uh, by the mobile clinic at the Element last Thursday and another clinic is scheduled for June 3rd at the same location. Reminder that we have a work session scheduled for Tuesday, May 25th at 5.30 to discuss uh, Madison Metro's commitment to providing uh, sufficient capacity uh, for local bus uh, service to Sun Prairie. Uh, and we'll also be uh, discussing the process for determining the, the bus routes. Uh, so the meeting will be televised and will follow the normal process for public comment, uh, just so, so folks are aware of that. And that's everything I have. Thank you, Mr. President. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Oppenheimer. Okay, uh, referrals, are there any? Okay, hearing none, I have the one I just spoke about um, to bring back for discussion to the Committee of the Whole, uh, the Alder to Alder um, meetings with other municipalities. So that's the only thing I have. Okay, anything, no other referrals? I would ask for a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, we'll see you. Done, I think five minutes. Okay.